GDP is the primary metric people use to evaluate a macroeconomy. United States have had the largest GDP in modern days since the late 19th century. Chinese economy has grown drastically in the last 40 years since the end of the Cultural Revolution and the beginning of the new era of reform and open policies. It has replaced Japan to become the second largest economy by nominal GDP. It is even ranked the largest economy by the so-called GDP based on PPP. That's a little confusing to many people. What exactly is PPP, and why is China a larger economy than the United States using that particular methodology? And does it make sense at all? In this short video, I'll briefly explain what a PPP is and how to use it in the context of GDP comparison. First, let's take a look at the nominal GDP by country. There's a few institutions that report these numbers. We'll stick to the ones by IMF, as shown on Wikipedia. The top five countries are the United States, China, Japan, Germany, and the UK. India is number six, followed by France and Italy at number seven and eight. Note, the nominal GDP here are quoted in US dollar, which is the world reserve currency and used to place all the economies onto the same metric system. This is important, as we will show later. Now, looking at the GDP based on PPP, also in US dollar, we noticed China is now the largest economy, even on top of the United States. India, previously at number 6, now at number 3, replacing Japan, which is now at number 4. There's more shuffling among the countries below. But what does this all mean? Why there's two different versions of GDP, and which one is the more objective scientific metric we should use when assessing a country's economy? Remember, both the nominal GDP and the GDP based on PPP earlier were quoted in US dollar. But we know that different countries use different, their own local currencies. China uses Chinese Yuan or RMB. Eurozone countries use Euro. Great Britain uses British Pound. In order to compare the economies denominated in different currencies, we need to use certain exchange methodology to convert all the currencies to a common one, by default the US dollar. The main reason that there are two versions of GDP is exactly because they use two different currency conversion methodologies. Let's first try to understand what a PPP is. PPP stands for Purchasing Power Parity. It basically means the value of a currency is determined by its purchasing power for actual goods and services that are common between two countries or even across the whole globe. For example, let's assume in the States it costs $1,000 to buy a typical computer. Note in the States we are using US dollar since that's our local currency. While in China, the same computer with exactly the same specs and performance, let's assume it costs 4,200 Chinese yuan. A reasonable conclusion we could draw from this is that 1,000 US dollars is equivalent to 4,200 Chinese yuan. Thus, they share the parity via the connection of that typical computer, the common product. If this parity holds true in those two countries, then other products that are commonly sold could be compared in a similar way. For example, if it costs $1 to buy a McDonald's Big Mac burger in the States, we can also ask how much it costs in China, but in Chinese yuan. Here, I'm making the number up, 4.2 Chinese yuan, so that the conversions for those two products, the computer and the burger, are consistent with each other. A fun fact about a PPP, a journal economist actually tracks the cost of Big Mac in our local currencies where it's sold and reports conversion as an unofficial PPP conversion rate, and it's called the Big Mac Index. Because McDonald's operates in over 100 countries in the world, this is actually not a bad assumption. If you follow the foreign exchange rate market, you would know that the market rate for US dollar and Chinese yuan is about 6.91 right now but not 4.2, meaning 1 US dollar is equivalent to 6.91 Chinese yuan by the market exchange rate. This is the rate you would trade on 
on most of the foreign exchange uh, trading platforms. Or what you would get if you go to the big banks to convert one currency to the other. If you have 6,910 Chinese yuan, when you go to a bank, you would get 1,000 US dollars minus some transaction cost. Now, let's see if we can connect this with the PPP. Again, using the typical computer as the common product, we know 4,200 yuan is equivalent to $1,000. Using this conversion rate, 6,910 yuan can buy roughly one and a half such computers, which if we sell in the States, we would get $1,645. So now we understand PPP is to use some common goods and services as some sort of medium of exchange. In fact, foreign exchange traders use PPP as one of the value factors to gauge the current market rate, whether it's too high or too low. However, there's a number of challenges with using PPP as the exchange rate. For one, it's really difficult to select a basket of goods and services that are comparable in different countries as the metric for purchasing power. There's also transportation and trade considerations between countries, among other issues. Nonetheless, there's attempts to provide pro reference PPP rate by a few institutions. The OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, publishes their calculation of PPP every month which is commonly used as the standard reference rate. With the PPP from OECD, we can now convert the nominal GDP in USD to GDP based on PPP. Remember, nominal GDP uses the market foreign exchange rate. So if we multiply the nominal GDP in USD by the foreign exchange rate to convert it back to the local currency, then divided by PPP to convert it again to USD, but now with PPP conversion rate, not the market rate. We get GDP based on PPP in US dollars. After some simple algebra, and China is now ranked first, and India is now the third from number six after the United States. So, by GDP based on PPP, China is the largest economy in the world. The question is that, is GDP by PPP the right metric to use? It's debatable at the very least. As we mentioned earlier, it's hard to define a basket of goods and services that can be used universally across the world. There's also other issues such as trade barriers and labor costs, etc. that make the direct comparison really difficult. Those issues, on the other hand, are the reasons why PPP rate and foreign exchange market rate diverge from each other. In a perfect world where people can trade freely across borders, PPP rate and the foreign exchange market rate ideally should be the same. Back to the ranking of economies, there's also another important factor to consider, which is the population. Although China and India are ranked first and the third in terms of GDP by PPP, respectively, due to their large populations, their GDP per capita, even if we use PPP, falls far behind many countries in the world. Out of about 220 countries and regions in the world, China is ranked at 100 while India at 155. There's also an ongoing debate whether or not the single number, GDP itself, is the right metric to use to evaluate a macroeconomy. For example, it doesn't really consider the value of a stay-at-home parent. Okay, hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.